shout aloud hallelujah let the person who wants the largest touch of God here tonight shout the loudest hallelujah let's close our eyes as we raise up our two hands to the Lord and pray for ourselves in this song Holy Ghost do it again do to see if you're my home cry while on all as thou art home Savior, 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 Savior Savior, Savior Hallelujah. Savior, 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 Savior.
He be my God, only closely to His side. Lord, I strengthen for each new day where He we may have Lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. God is loving me and around me. Put me back to his Sing it loud and clear Hallelujah Possibility possible. He made impossibility po- Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shama. He made impossibility. Jehovah Roy, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Nisi. He made impossibility. Po- Hallelujah. He made him. Possibility possible, and made possibility possible. Raise up your right hands to the heavenly and declare this loud and clear. Every conspiracy against my destiny in the heavenly. Scatter by fire in the name of Jesus. Scatter the conspiracy. Scatter by fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful God, we thank you for another wonderful evening. I will praise your holy name for bringing us here by your power. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, specially open our understanding. Lay your hands upon us by your power. Do great, marvelous, mighty, and wondrous things. And by the time we leave this meeting tonight, let all the glory belong to you. Let the shame belong to the devil. And let the blessings belong to us. Any agenda of wickedness against anyone here tonight, let them be scattered in the name of Jesus. Let them be scattered in the name of Jesus. Let them be scattered in the name of Jesus. Now with your voices raised up high, I want you to pick a song of praises in your own mouth. And sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Any song of praises is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Is the great I am. His power is the absolute power. He has never failed. He will never fail. Sing a song to the glory of God. How great is our God. How great is this name? How great is this love? Forever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty red sea. 
Hans Van Leeuwen Hier Und Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Complete, complete, complete in Him. I am complete in Him. Complete, complete, complete in Him. Hallelujah. I am complete in Him. Complete, complete. Hallelujah. Complete, complete, complete in. Hallelujah. I am complete. Yohan, 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 Yohan. It's not by works of righteousness, but by His grace alone. It's not by works of righteousness, but by His grace alone. It's not by works of righteousness, but by His grace alone. Oh, uh, complete it. Yes, complete. Com- Hallelujah. Uh, complete, complete, complete. In Him, Hallelujah. Uh, complete it. Johan, Johan. The fullness of the God and bodily dwelleth in the Lord. The fullness of the God and bodily dwelleth in the Lord. The fullness of the God and bodily dwelleth in the Lord. Oh, we are complete. 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 Hallelujah. Complete, come, always complete him. Hallelujah. Send that fire, that Holy Ghost fire. Send that fire again, that Holy Ghost. Send the fire. Yes, yes, yes. Send the fire. Send the fire again. The Holy Ghost. I send the fire. There is nothing more that I can do for Jesus did it all. There is nothing more that I can do for Jesus did it all. There is nothing more that I can do for Jesus did it all. Oh, I'm complete. Oh, it's complete. Hallelujah. Complete, complete, complete. Hallelujah. Say, oh God, arise. And let all my enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it. Let there be a scattering tonight. In Jesus' name.
we pray. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Tonight, we're looking at the analysis of terror. If you like, you can say the analysis of spiritual terror. When we're talking about terror, we're talking about several things mixed together. There is physical terror. There is mental terror. And then the worst terror is a spiritual terror. When we talk about terror, we're talking about fear. We're talking about dismay, horror, something that causes panic, something that intimidates. A very good reader of the newspapers, and if you have been watching the TV, you'll find that terrorism has gripped the world in a terrible grip now. People attach bombs on their bodies, walk into crowds of people and blow themselves and the people up. Even sometimes pregnant women are used to do this kind of operations. But before you could see the manifestation of that kind of open terror, it is the spiritual one that comes first. A man or woman enveloped with the spirit of terror, of course we go and unleash terror on others. And we should look at this very carefully now. So that you can know how to pray here tonight. Let's pick up a few Bible facts on terror. In Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. I read verse 16. A lot of awesome things are going to happen here tonight. Because a lot of people have been suffering from this kind of operations. And the Lord is going to set them free. For example, if you have that person here and you always feel like eating raw meat, it's an attack of terror upon your life. That power shall be broken tonight. In Leviticus chapter 26, look at what it says in verse 16. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. Terror can be given an appointment to harass a person. It is a spirit that can be given appointment to terrorize a person. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, Deuteronomy 32 verse 25, Deuteronomy 32 verse 25, the sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin. So there is internal terror. There could be terror within. Terror within. And I want you to understand that the commonest demon in the world is the demon of fear. A high grade of that spirit is the spirit of terror. Now Psalm 91 now throws a very good picture of what you mean by terror. In Psalm 91 verse 5. Psalm 91 verse 5 is very very interesting. He said, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day. So terror is assigned the night hour. It has been assigned the night hour. The terror by night. I pray that anyone here today, aroused by the terror by night, will be instantly delivered in the name of Jesus. In Job chapter 8, verse 14, we we'll pick up a very useful information again. The book of Job, chapter 18, verse 14, sorry. 18, 14, the book of Job. Job 18, 14 says, His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. Now we are introduced to a king of terrors. The king of terrors is understood there as the spirit of death. He is normally referred to as a king of terrors. There are weapons of spiritual terror. Let me now go through these weapons one by one. So you can know how the enemy uses this to terrorize people's lives. The first weapon of terror is seduction. The enemy manipulates evil to make it appear good. The enemy magnetizes people to do evil things. He draws men into what he knows will destroy them. 
it draws men and women into immorality of all kinds. It creates people with evil magnets who magnetize people who will have stood straight to begin to stand crooked. There is a mystery about seduction that many, many believers don't understand. It is a department in the school of terror. Another weapon of terror is affliction. These, the enemy uses to cause distressful situations. Using various kinds of infirmity and all kinds of terrible things. A lot of people who go to the hospital approach the place with morbid fear. Fear that this may happen, that may happen, this may happen, that may happen. And because of that kind of fear, a lot of havoc happens. And the enemy that has positioned so many doctors who themselves are sometimes satanists will make a medical, clinical prophecy. This is the problem. And once you sign for it, you sign for it. Three, the third weapon of terror is aggressive attack. That is, they just go straight to assault their victims. Sometimes with terrible dreams. Sometimes with many, many hardships. Sometimes with many life-threatening problems. The attacks are waged. Four, depression. They attack people with the spirit of heaviness, with the spirit of anxiety and discouragement. They know that once you come to the house of God without depression in your heart, with discouragement in your heart, you don't get anything out of the hand of God. They know that the heaviness, the depression will bring doubt into your spirit. And the Bible says the man who is doubting is like the waste of the sea, sea tossed here and there. So let not such a man think that he can receive anything from the hand of the Lord. That's why the Bible says he gave beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for money, the garment of praise, instead of the spirit of heaviness. When there is heaviness in your heart, you are under attack. And if you don't quickly clear it off, under that cloud of heaviness in your spirit, you can be sure that attacks are coming. I pray that anyone here today, that the enemy has clouded your heart with heaviness because of one trouble or the other. That the heaviness shall be cleared away by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. The fifth weapon of terror is forceful initiation. They initiate somebody into their group. They recruit people into demonic associations. Either consciously or unconsciously. My heart goes out to so many people tonight who are unconsciously initiated into what they hate so much. But although they hate it, they are part of it. Once you begin to check your body and you find more than 10, 12 incisions, you are already into something. You have already entered into something. Once you begin to find yourself in strange, strange places in your dream, you are already in somewhere. It doesn't stop you from speaking in tongues. You can speak in tongues, no problem. It doesn't stop you from being a Bible study teacher. It doesn't even stop you from being a general advisor. It doesn't stop you from being a pastor. There are plenty of pastors and workers in churches who are blind witches, blind familiar spirit people, but they just do not know. If your mother is a witch, you're a witch. Your own may be blind. If your father is a, is a witch doctor, you're a witch doctor. He's, your own may be hidden unless you break free from this unconscious initiation. Because you never can tell what you have been fed with. You never can tell where they've taken you to. You never can tell which myth you even drank. The sixth weapon of terror is evil influence. They try and affect people and affect their lives and influence their actions negatively. Sometimes you send people to the university, they go to the university as nice human beings, but after they've been influenced there, they come out as rebels. They've been influenced to become evil people. The seventh weapon of of terror is persuasion. They, pass, they convince their victims to do what would be completely unfavorable. Persuade the person to destroy himself or herself. They tell you what you are not and you are completely impressed. Eight, oppression. That is, they harass the person in one or more areas of their lives. Oppression is the center forward in the football team of the devil. Once you lose the battle against oppression, you lose other battles. Most of the terminal cases you find in the hospital are first of all starting with a small oppression. Oppression is like you are pressing somebody down. You want to lift your head and you say no and is banging your head down. 
Oppression is like a spirit sitting on somebody's shoulder and pushing the person's head down. And whenever oppression goes beyond tolerance, the result is insanity. That's why the Bible says oppression make it a wise man mad. We have plenty of people moving about on the street who have been terribly oppressed and because of that they are suffering from insanity. You see people telling you that their brain is like it's going to bust open. You see people who tell you that there are things moving about in the head, violently moving about, but you can't see what is moving about. They can't see what is moving about. And sometimes when that oppression takes hold of a person, the person will speak in tongues and speak in tongues and speak in tongues and prophesy for 12 hours non-stop. Why is that one in the Bible? It's all clever oppression. Oppression makes the mind to be bewildered. It's a terrible thing when oppression has gained entrance. Because it has a demoting power, it has a maddening power. When oppression meets oppression, listen carefully. Wife is being pressed down on the bed regularly. Husband is being pressed down on the bed regularly. And now you join both of them together in marriage. All you have done is to join oppression plus oppression. Is equal to oppression raised to the power of two. That's all. They may now start complaining. Hey, where, where is it? I see since, since we got married, things have dropped. I lost my job. I lost this. I lost that. It's because oppression has married the oppression. Now, possession. That is the enemy now completely takes over the person, controls his actions, his controls his movements. These are departments in the school of terror. There are people walking about on the streets, beloved. The actual spirit man has been taken out. What is walking about is another spirit. Ten. Domination. They now enthrone themselves in the person's life. And the person becomes subject to them. That's the tenth weapon of terror. The eleventh one is the remote controlling powers. Satanic satellite power monitoring the lives of people. People being controlled from afar. If you see the amount of satanic wickedness engaged in the night, you'll be surprised. This is an area that we need to really pray about. The enemy attaches a spiritual rope to someone and is pulling the person that you don't know. People are being controlled with all kinds of satanic instruments. Oppression from afar. Some use amulets to control people. Ornaments with magic spell. They are controlling the person. Some will use this demonic cross they call Hank. Anytime you see something like a cross and you punch a hole at the top of it, it is no longer the cross on which Jesus died. It has become a cross called Hank, which is a witchcraft cross. Some they use charm to control them. Some use incantations to control them. Some is placenta control. And those men who are very loose, sometimes they use their semen to control them. All these ones are tools of terror. The number 12 weapon of terror is what we call spiritual armed robbery. Spiritual armed robbers, they exploit the mystery of marriage and sexual union to cause a person's life to be confused. This is the mystery of the spirit wife, spirit husband. The bottom line of what we are saying tonight is this. A lot of people are under the grip of terror. A lot of people are experiencing what to call silent, clever fear. And if they don't deal with it, it will explode one day. Tonight, beloved, there are prayers I really want you to pray from your heart. We're going to pray plenty of prayers. Because the way things are going on now, the words of scripture as revealed in Revelation 12 is gradually coming to pass. Woe unto the earth and unto the sea. For the devil has come down against you, having with great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. You can see a lot of trouble in the sea now, hurricane this, hurricane that, all this uh, storm all over the place. It is understood. The Bible says, Whoa! Unto the earth and unto the sea. The gear of the enemy has changed to number five. And a lot of terrible actions are taking place. Many wake up in the morning to go to work, they never come back home. That's why the Bible says, that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
That's why you have to be under that shadow always. And you must also learn how to fight. Spiritual terror is a terrible thing. We used to have a friend in those days, a man of God. He had a daughter, a four-year-old girl. This is spiritual terror going on in our age. One night, he turned in his bed and he opened his eyes momentarily. Then he saw a cinema show taking place in his presence. His four-year-old daughter suddenly started to become longer and taller and taller and taller. He was not sleeping, he was at night, he was, was looking at her. Very soon, this four-year-old girl became like a, a tall lady. And from nowhere, clothes came to her body. Although the door was locked with keys, she just went out. Just like that. The man was amazed. I wonder what kind of spirit is this? Since that day, he has been afraid. A father afraid of his daughter. It's a terrible situation. Instead of praying, he did not pray. Rather, he was trying to catch her. One night again, he pretended to sleep. Again, this four-year-old girl started to become taller. This man jumped down from the bed and tried to clear her legs from the ground. All of a sudden, he found that the leg just went through, through air and smashed it on the iron of the bed. And the leg broke. And my tiny would look down. The girl he wanted to attack was sleeping on her mat. She didn't even wake up. Terror. Can you raise up your right hand to the heavens? And say this loud and clear. Every internal terror. terror. Organized to harass my life. Is that the loudest you can say it? In the name of Jesus, deal with the internal terror. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, beloved, listen. When you begin to dream of being abandoned, no friend, no pastor, no one to help you, find yourself lost in the center of nowhere. It is a satanic plan to make you lose friends and favor. And to make sure that you don't recover, or if you recover, it's with great difficulty. Those are dreams of terror. You find yourself in a dream as a woman going through abortion. The enemy is trying to steal something good from you, and that thing is at an infancy stage. You find yourself in a dream too, playing cards, playing games. It's evidence that your life is being manipulated. When you wake up from that kind of dream, you need to command the Holy Ghost fire to burn the cards. Or you used to dream of constant contact with ancestors. Constant contact. What the result of that, if it's not checked, is illness and spiritual carryover. You used to dream of army or armed men running after you. It means you have battles to fight and there are plenty of obstacles. Remember the words of Paul. He said, a great and a vexed door is open unto me. So, but there are many adversaries who are saying you will not enter. I pray that every enemy saying you will not enter into your door breakthrough. Shall be disgraced tonight in the name of Jesus. Perhaps you begin to dream too of seeing yourself in the asylum or among sick people. It is a satanic strategy to render you spiritually ineffective. You need to send fire to that hospital and discharge yourself by force. Or you dream that you are bald, there was air, there is air on your head physically, but spiritually there is nothing now. Or you see yourself in a barber's shop. That is evidence that the enemy is removing your glory or is removing your security. You need to recover your air and send fire to destroy the barber's shop. Or you find yourself in a dream with a basket. It's financial loss and loss of blessings. You need to set that basket ablaze. Or you used to dream of bats. Attacking you, the enemy is planning to use pretenders and hypocrites and witchcraft powers against you. But most animals that the enemy uses in the dream, they represent difficulties and troubles. The solution is to kill them or drive them away. Or you find yourself drinking alcohol, alcohol in the dream. The enemy is trying to confuse your life and make you do what you should not do. 
Or you see yourself getting married to a very strange person and you try to avoid this person, but no, the marriage was going on. That's the terrorism we're talking about in the spiritual realm. It's evidence that the enemy has either married you off or is trying to marry you off. Or you try, find yourself bleeding, bleeding, bleeding in the dream. Bleeding is loss of virtues. Maybe it's taking virtues away from you. You need to recover your virtue. You need to command restoration of your blood. Or you used to dream, you were dreaming that somebody was attacking with blooms. Enemy wants to attack you with false friends and divided unity. See yourself with corpses. It means the spirit of death and hell is after you. Or you see cobwebs, cobwebs. It is the spirit of rejection and disfavor. Or do you see yourself in the dream wearing earrings? It's evidence of slavery and domination. Or you find yourself with ear wigs. You're putting wigs on your head. The enemy wants to replace your good glory with counterfeit ones. You need to send fire to those wigs. Or you find yourself in handcuffs. The enemy is putting a curse on your handwork. You need to destroy the handcuffs. Or you see yourself in a funeral service. The enemy is trying to challenge you with the spirit of death. You find yourself trying to hide. Some powers were pursuing you. You couldn't fight them, so you are hiding. It means there's an array of witchcraft power that is greater than you running after you. You keep seeing yourself mountains or climbing and climbing and never getting to the top. Is up, up, the enemy is putting obstacles in your way. You see yourself in a jungle and you don't know how you got to that jungle. The enemy wants to confuse your destiny completely. Or you find yourself in tattered clothes or torn clothes. The enemy is planning shame and disgrace. Or you find yourself in chains. The enemy is trying to hold you down. So that you don't do what God wants you to do. All these are dreams of terror. And if we keep quiet and we do nothing, the battle is not likely to go back to go forward. But thank God because of what is written in Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. Matthew 11 verse says, From the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. The Lord is calling out today, beloved, for aggressive Christianity. The battle is not for the chicken hearted. The battle is not for the easily discouraged. It is for those who can exercise violence. Serious spiritual violence. It is for those who refuse to give up. God is searching and looking for violent soldiers to drink the blood of the enemy and to slay the giants. All the men who were useful in any form in the Bible were those who were viol- spiritually violent. Is it Moses you want to talk about? In Exodus chapter 10, Exodus chapter 10, I'm saying this to you because there is no gentle method of arresting anything evil. If it's evil, there is no gentle method of arresting it. All the methods for confronting evil is also aggressive. Exodus chapter 10, Look at what happens in verse 28 and 29. And Pharaoh said unto him, who was talking to Moses now, Get thee from me. Take it to thyself. See my face no more. For in that day thou says my face, Thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, I will see thy face again no more. Violence! That's violence! That's spiritual violence. And he never saw the face of Pharaoh again. Because Pharaoh perished in the Red Sea. I pray that every Pharaoh that is claiming that they don't want to see you alive anymore, they shall perish in the Red Sea. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So the reason we are reading about Moses today is because he was spiritually violent. Take Elijah. Elijah confronted Ahab. In 1 Kings chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 18, there is no gentle method of arresting anything evil. 1 Kings chapter 18, look at verse 17. 1 Kings 18, verse 17. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have forsaken the commands of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. 
He was addressing the king like that. And by the time you get to First Kings chapter 21, First Kings 21 verse 20, I'm telling you there is no gentle way of arresting anything evil. And he upset to Elijah, As thou find me, O my enemy, and he said, I found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Say, so Behold, I will bring evil upon thee. I will take away that posterity, I will cut off from Herb him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut and left in Israel. I will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. For the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that died of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that died in the field, shall the fowls of the air eat. That's violence, spiritual violence. Or is it Elisha you want to talk about? In Second Kings 3, he confronted kings. Or is it David you want to talk about? He confronted Goliath. Or is it Peter? Peter faced Simon the magician and said rough things to him. Paul spoke to by Jesus. God does not want coward soldiers. The reason you are reading about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were because they were spiritually violent. Spiritual violence has nothing to do with your height, with your color, with your shape, with your intelligence. It is knowing your authority and using that authority. It is distributing spiritual obituaries to the powers that are attacking your life. It is knowing that you are committing a sin when you have mercy on the enemies of your soul. Or have you never read what the psalmist wrote in Psalm 11 verse 4? Psalm 11 verse 4 has this to say. Psalm 11 4 says this. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked are him that love violence, his soul hated. Upon the wicked it shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Why is the Lord taking that aggressive stand? Because of what is in Psalm 2. For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. So this is the righteous they are targeting. They are targeting those who love God, who are serving God. Look at the popular Psalm 27 verse 2. Psalm 27 verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, the Bible said they stumbled and they fell. God is looking for such people today to fight and to take over the camp of the enemy and turn them against themselves. It is on record that no power or association or a group of persons has ever fought against the gospel and the prospered. Emperor Nero fought against Christianity. He died a miserable death. Today the gospel is alive and strong. One Frenchman called Voltaire boasted that he would devote all his energy to destroy every Bible in France. He died. After his death, printing was invented. A Christian press bought his house and they were printing the Bible from there. Adolf Hitler hated Christianity. In fact, some people refer to him as Antichrist. Hitler is dead now and his headquarters is now a Christian chapel. So no power can group together against the things of God and succeed. Tonight, violence is the only language terror understands. Power is the only language that terror respects. Therefore, if you are under any form of attack and there is a hidden root of the enemy warring against you, the first thing you need to do is to surrender under the mighty hand of God. That surrendering is important. You must first of all give yourself to God unheartedly, unconditionally. It is then the Bible says you can resist the enemy and the enemy will flee. Tonight, there are prayers to pray here. There are things to do. There are strange attacks that have to cease. Rise up on your feet and all eyes closed. The prayers of tonight, they are not prayers to joke with. 
They are not prayers you pray and your body, your soul and your spirit does not know you are praying. They are prayers you pray and your body, your soul and your spirit will know that something is happening. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here tonight and you are not born again, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. Please do so very quickly now. Whatever you are, why all eyes are closed, just raise up your right hand and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you say that short prayer with me, immediately we'll just find a way to the altar here so that we can pray more with you. The first seven prayers I want you to pray. Make sure that nobody's voice overshadows your voice. As we pray these prayers, as someone here you used to feel like eating raw meat, that bondage will be completely broken now. There's also someone here, your own very mother, threatening to destroy you. As we're praying this prayer, the thing planted in your body that is giving them the confidence that they could destroy you will jump out of that body. As we pray that this prayer, that person who has been perceiving strange odors alone, just be hearing this strange odor that others cannot hear. The enemy wants to use these odors to limit your destiny. Those things shall be cancelled immediately. We start praying now. But if you are that person, that occasionally as you are moving on the streets, you feel like pulling off your clothes and throwing them away, make sure that this prayer we are going to pray, pray with holy anger. If you are that person, occasionally it's as if your breathing wants to stop. Please don't negotiate with the enemy at all this evening. Don't wait till another day to receive your deliverance. Don't wait till another day to receive that deliverance. Everybody will say this loud and clear. Please don't let anybody's voice of shadow your own. Is this seven prayers I want you to pray? Terror by night. I signed against my destiny. Can I hear you saying this loud and clear? Is that the loudest you can say it? I'm sure you can do a lot better than that. In the name of Jesus, just deal with the terror. Violence, spiritual violence. Violence, spiritual violence. As from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered and violence. And the violence taken to my force. And the violence taken to my force. Masikaton de Kepela Boshenderaba. Aha, 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 aha. Yes, yes. Continue, 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 continue. Spirit of the living God, move, 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 move. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. Don't say anything now. The arrows of terror fired into the two eyes of someone. It's been taken out. That's right. The one at the back of the head has been taken out now. The one that is in the heart is making your heart to seize. It's been taken out now. The one in the right leg, close to the ankle, is being taken out now. The arrows of the terror of, na- of the night that has fired into the backbone and inside the belly button is being taken out now. We are here for serious business tonight. We're not here to joke at all. If you are that person that an unseen power used to grab your head and start turning it, look at what is happening now. The fire of God is coming upon the head and that evil hand upon your head has been roasted. Say this again loud and clear. Arrows of fear are signed against my heart. Backfire in the name of Jesus. 
deal with the arrows of fear. In the name of Jesus, Maloka Sepete Kate, Polika Sipia Kande Rabosanda. Look, look at what is happening. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Mara Sekatunda Yabushinde Rabosanto. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are that person there tonight, up to this week, this week, you see smoked India hemp. Find a way to the altar very quickly. Because you have only seven days to live. Because the enemy has been harassing you since you were a little boy. And this is what they want to use to kill you. This is number three that I want you to pray. Make sure that you pray it with violence. Powers of the night. <laughs> Sisters, can I hear you saying this loud and clear? Is that the loudest you can say? Sister? A sign to terminate my destiny. Can I hear the sister saying that again? Brothers, shout it loud and clear. Jesus. Yes. Spiritual violence. Yes, 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 yes. Masika tunda kaya boshende ra boshende. Jesus name we pray. We are making progress. Very good progress. So every demon power hired against me I bury you now. Can you say that loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. Masikatola kaya boshende raboso. Deketende kaya boshende raboko tenda raba. Maria Paul kate sente. Jesus, then we pray. Oh, yes. 20 people tied down with a rope in the spirit. You can hear the breaking of the ropes now. So that you can be set free. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Pastors, uh, please lay hands on these people here at the front and command the fire of God into their lives so that the spirit of death can be broken. 
Everybody will shout this again loud and clear. Powers of my fathers are <laughs> say yes to the enemy. <laughs> Can you say this loud and clear? Is that the loudest you can say it? Death! In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. If we say yes to the enemy, their time is up. In Jesus' name we pray. Man of God, I prayed for you here at the front. So you go and sin no more. Go back to your seat and sin no more. You will say this again loud and clear. With all the violence your heart can gather. Say, powers! Behind my problems. Can you say this loud and clear? Damn! In the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Tara of the night. At the edge of my breakthroughs. Can you shout this loud and clear? Your time is up. Damn. In the name of Jesus. The terror of the night. At the edge of my breakthroughs, your time is up. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Pick a song of praises again in your mouth. And sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings. And to the Lord of Lords. What a mighty God we serve. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Let us share the grace in fellowship.